This graph illustrates the concentration change of reactants and products over time. So initially we have only reactants and as time goes by, reactants are being consumed and products are being produced. So when do you think equilibrium is reached? In this area we have a constant concentration and this is when equilibrium is being reached. This is because the reactants and products are not going to change in amounts as they are at constant concentration. Basically, when the lines turn straight, equilibrium is reached. Create a forward and reverse reaction over time. So when do you think equilibrium is reached? You remember, dynamic equilibrium means the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. This means equilibrium is reached when they are both equal to each other. Basically, when the lines turn straight, equilibrium is reached. If H2 is added to this reaction, describe the effect on the graph. So if H2 is added, don't point at what is being added, so this is a shift right. A shift right points at the products, so the products increase, and it doesn't point at the reactants, so the reactants decrease. To graph it, it's as simple as graphing what we described. H2 is added, so H2 increases. H2 is a reactant, and reactants decrease, so H2 decreases. However, it won't decrease more than its initial amount. N2 is a reactant, and reactants decrease, so N2 decreases. NH3 is a product and products increase, so NH3 increases. Now, the impact of increasing and decreasing is dependent on the coefficient. So H2 has a coefficient of 3, so it would decrease more compared to N2, which has a coefficient of 1. Just keep this in mind when graphing. If NH3 is removed, describe the effect on the graph. Point at what is being removed, so this is a shift right. A shift right points at the products, so the products increase and it doesn't point at the reactants, so the reactants decrease. And now we just graph what we described. NH3 is removed, so NH3 decreases. NH3 is a product, so it will increase. However, it won't increase more than its initial amount. H2 is a reactant, and reactants decrease, so H2 decreases. N2 is also a reactant, so it will decrease as well. Remember to keep in mind that coefficients determine how much it should decrease by. If temperature is increased, describe the effect on the graph. This is an exothermic reaction because enthalpy is negative, so heat can be treated as a product. If temperature increases, don't point at what is being increased, so this is a shift left. Shift left points at the reactants, so the reactants increase, and it doesn't point at the products, so the products decrease. For temperature changes, we just graph what the shift does. N2 is a reactant, and reactants increase, so N2 will increase. H2 is also a reactant, so it will increase. NH3 is a product, and products decrease, so NH3 decreases. If pressure increases, describe the effect on the graph. So for pressure changes, we need to count the total gas moles on both sides. So on the reactant side, we have 1 from N2, and we have 3 from H2, so we have 4 in total. On the product side, we have 2 from NH3, so we have 2. When pressure increases, point at the smaller number to reduce the extra pressure. A shift right points at the products, so the products increase in concentration, and it doesn't point at the reactants, so the reactants decrease. And now we simply just graph what we described. So since pressure increases, everything increases first. N2 increases, H2 increases, and NH3 increases. If pressure decreased, everything would decrease first. And now we just graph the effect of the shift. So N2 is a reactant, and reactants decrease, so N2 decreases. H2 is also a reactant, so it will decrease. NH3 is a product and products increase, so NH3 increases some more. Let's try this practice problem. In yellow are tips to help guide you. You can pause this video and do this yourself or work along with me. Describe the correct stresses at A, B, C, and D for the following equilibrium. So at A, everything is increasing first, so this has to be a pressure change. Pressure causes everything to increase or decrease first. Since everything is increasing, this means pressure is increasing and let's confirm if pressure is actually increasing. So for pressure changes, we need to compare the total gas moles on the reactant side and the total gas moles on the product side. 2, 1, so 3, and just 2. When pressure increases, point at the smaller number, so this is a shift right. A shift right increases the products and decreases the reactants. So the correct stress at A is increasing pressure. At B, we see that CO is decreasing and O2 is decreasing. And the CO2 is decreasing and then it's increasing. This has to be adding and removing a reactant or product. And it's clear that CO2 is being removed. So when CO2 is removed, point at what is being removed. So there's a shift right. Shift right increases products and decreases reactants. Products should increase 
then reactants should decrease. So the correct stress would be CO2 is removed. At C, CO is increasing, O2 is increasing, and CO2 is decreasing. This is most likely a change in temperature since it is just graphing the effect of the shift. So how would temperature be changed so it can shift left since CO is increasing and O2 is increasing? This is an exothermic reaction so heat can be treated as a product. If we increase temperature, don't point at what is being increased, so this is a shift left. So temperature is being increased and it will cause a shift left. A shift left increases reactants, as we can see here, and decreases product. So the correct stress at C would be increasing temperature or adding heat. Now at D, CO2, O2, and CO are staying constant. It has a constant concentration, which means it's not shifting. So what stress causes no shift? Adding a catalyst or an inert gas caused no shift. This is what I like to call remember notes. If you remember and understand everything on this page, you should be able to describe equilibrium shifts for a reaction on a graph. So when the lines turn straight, equilibrium is reached. Basically, when the lines are straight, the reactants or products are at a constant concentration, so this is where equilibrium is reached. Graphing equilibrium shifts. Adding and removing reactants or products. First, graph what is removed or added first, then graph the effect of the shift. For this graph, any stress is removed, and then the effect of the shifts are graphed. Changing temperature, just graph the effect of the shift. So we increase temperature, reactants increase, and products decrease. You only graph the effects of the shifts for temperature. Changing pressure, graph pressure, everything increases or decreases, then graph the effect of the shift. For this reaction, pressure increases, so we graph that first, and then we just graph the effects of the shift after.